All right, guys, here we go. So this is the um, homework number five, polynomial, uh, solving polynomial equations. All right, um, I believe this is pages, I don't have it right in front of me, um, but this is the solving polynomial equations homework. I'll put the pages on when I when I post this. Um, but anyway, so just wanted to go through this with you guys. I have a lot of questions about it. Um, just pay attention. This can kind of be like the notes as well. I know I didn't um, have a ton of time to go through um, the entire lesson. Just I, I tried to limit them to an hour, so I'm at you know less than an hour, so I'm not overloading you guys with things. So pay attention to this homework. We're going to go over it. Um, if you have again questions, please feel free to send me an email. You can just send it to my school email at this point, point. Um, and uh, you could also post questions to uh, Google Classrooms. That's fine, right? Just like class. Uh, if you guys have questions, you should speak up because most, you know, if you have a question, somebody else probably has a similar question. So let's go through this, all right? Um, and if there's any concepts that, it's, you know, we haven't gone over in a while, um, I'll kind of just speak to those concepts so that you guys can um, pick up on those. But you really need to follow along. There's some things that we haven't done in a little while here. Um, so pay attention. And again, if you have questions, make sure you're reaching out. All right, so we're doing the odds. So whenever I do that, I can just get rid of these evens so that we have space over here to do work if we need it, okay? Uh, so number one here, all right, it says 12x cubed minus 3x squared equals zero. All right, in the notes, I told you we need to make sure that the right side is equal to zero and the left side is in standard form. Well, we have that already here for number one, all right? Um, so first thing we need to do is factor this, right? Is it factored? Or, uh, can we factor it? What, what can we do, right? Well, there's a GCF. The first thing you always need to look at is GCF, and that GCF here is 3x squared, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and write that out, 3x squared. That's the GCF, all right? We're going to divide that out, and we end up getting 4x, all right, 4x minus 1 equals 0, all right? That's still on the right side. All right, so now we have... 3x squared times 4x minus 1. We have two factors here, okay? This is a factor right here, and this is a factor right here. All right, can we factor either of those any further? No, we cannot. We don't have any difference of squares. All right, if we had a 2 here, right, we would have a difference of squares, right? But, but we don't have a 2 there, right? So there's nothing we can do. We can't factor this any further. So as we did in the notes, we're going to kind of break these apart, all right, with a line here. And we're going to set each of these equal to 0. So we have 3x squared equals 0. Once we get it all the way factored out, all right, we have to set each factor equal to 0. So 4x minus 1 equals 0. And now we're just solving for x. All right, so for this one, um, for, for the, I'll go back to this color. For this one here, first thing we need to do is divide both sides by 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0, okay? Um, so we're left with x squared equals 0, all right? Um, now what do we have to do? All right, we have x squared. How do we get x by itself? What is the opposite of um, the exponent of 2, right? Well, it's a square root, right? The opposite of squaring something is a square root. So we're going to square both sides, all right? Get used to doing this, and we end up with, again, x the x square root of 0 is 0. We don't need to put plus or minus 0. There is no negative 0. All right? um, but in any other circumstance where you need to put plus and minus. Okay? Um, so there we go. That's one solution. x equals 0. All right? Now over here, right, we add 1 to both sides. Just solving for x plus 1. We get 4x equals 1. Divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4, and x is now by itself over here. So we're left with x equals 1 over 4. And there's a, another solution. So if we were to write this out as the proper, um, in the proper form, we get x equals 0, comma, 1 over 4. And we need those little fancy squiggly parentheses here. Oh, those are pretty good, actually. All right. So there we go. That's number 1. All right. Number 2. Again, we need to get the right side equal to 0. So we need to subtract 9x from both sides and keep it in standard form. All right, basic algebra, I'm going to leave that step out here. Again, we're subtracting 9x squared to both sides, okay? You guys know how to do that. So 2x to the fourth minus 9x squared. I put that behind it because we need to keep it in standard form here. All right, so there we go. We got 2x to the 4th minus 9x squared. All right, is there any GCF that we can take out? 
yes, we can take out an x squared. So we're going to take the x squared out. And factor that out. Now we have the parentheses, and we get 2x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now let's take a look at this. Can we do anything to factor this further? Do we have any perfect, you know, difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes? Do we have anything that we can do? This one is very close to being a difference of squares. Right? The problem, of course, is the 2 is not a perfect square. So we don't have a difference of squares. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do what we do. And this one gets a little bit more complicated, so we may need to use some space over on this side. So let me get rid of this problem just so we're not confusing anybody here. All right. So let's write this out. x squared equals 0. That's my first factor. Set each factor equal to 0. Okay. So x squared equals 0. What do we have to do to both sides? we got to square root them to get x by itself. All right. We're left with x. Come on now. x. I don't know what's happening. x equals 0. There we go. Thank you, Penn. All right, and then this one, 2x squared minus 9 equals 0. All right, so there we go. Now what do we do first? Add 9 to both sides. Add 9. All right, now we're left with 2x squared equals 9. Divide both sides by 2. And we're left with, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this up here, we're left with x squared equals 9 over 2. All right, so what do we got to do here? All right, what do we have to do here? Well, we have x squared, right, in order to get x by itself. Hopefully you've been following along. We need to take the square root of both sides to get x by itself. Now, we need to take the square root of this entire fraction, right, the entire thing. All right, so that's going to become plus or minus at this point, all right, plus or minus. So, huh. How do we do this? All right, well, this is one of those math rules that we've gone over before in the past. Let's make sure that we remember this. All right, I'm going to rewrite this over here. This is really x squared. No, oh, excuse me, x, because we took the square root, right? You can see it right there. We took the square root. So it's now just x. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 9 over the square root of 2. All right. So that's where we are at this point. All right, so when we take the square root, look at this, right? The square root of 9, all right? What is the square root of 9? Well, the square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to go ahead and write that, all right? I'm going to do that right here. Oh, excuse me. Here we go. x equals plus or minus 3 over the square root of 2, all right? Well, here's the issue. We cannot have a square root on the denominator, okay? Can't have a square root on the denominator, so... Um, if you see this, all right, it's a little bit of an issue, all right, but it's very simple to take care of that, okay? Can't have a square root on the denominator. Can we have it on the numerator? Yes, so that's, that's sort of, we have to do it. That, that tells us what our solution is going to be. What we need to do is multiply the, de uh, the denominator by the square root of 2. Whatever it is, whatever the square root is that's down there, we just multiply it by that square root, and we will sh I'll show you what, exactly what happens here, all right, times the square root of 2, all right, and then this will end up being x equals... 3 plus or minus 3 square root of 2, because it's just mu being multiplied to the top. And then when you take a square root of 2 times square root of 2, right, those square roots end up canceling out, right? Because square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. Square root of 4 is just 2. So if you are multiplying by the same square root, right, it just really cancels out the square roots and makes it 2. And there's our answer, right? So we actually end up having um, really three answers here, all right? We have... And I'll write them all right here. X equals 0, comma, plus or minus 3 square root of 2 over 2. And the squiggly parentheses. So there are three answers, okay? We have 0. We have this being positive and then also this being negative. So there's technically three answers to this problem here. All right, let's go down to the next one. We have 8x cubed minus 125 equals 0, okay? So, do we have any GCFs? Well, I can tell you what we do have, okay? 8 is a perfect cube, 2 times 2 times 2. 
x cubed is a perfect cube, right? And 125 is a perfect cube. 5 times 5 times 5 gives you 125. So we have a difference of cubes here. All right, so we need to make sure that we remember what our difference of cubes um, factoring is, right? We need to get a and b, right? So again, a, what is the cube root of 8, right? So a will end up being 2, 2 times 2 times 2. Um, is the cube, you know, again, 2 is the cube root of 8, right? And then what number multiplies together 3 times to get x cubed? x. So a is 2x, right? And then b here, b equals what number multiplies together 3 times to get 125? That is 5. All right, so if we remember, I'll write this up here. a minus, excuse me, a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. This is our formula for um, difference of cubes. So yes, you have to go back through your notes. Right? This is this is what we have to do in math. We have to go back to our notes. We have to, if we don't have this memorized yet, all right, you should have this memorized for the difference of cubes in all reality, okay? Um, but we have to find a, which we found. We have to find b, which we found, and then go ahead and plug it right back in to this formula that we have right here, okay? So I'm going to plug those in. a is 2x. So we end up having 2x minus b minus 5 times. All right, so we have a squared. 2 times 2 is 4. x squared. We have to square both of the both of the numbers, right? 2 and x. All right, plus a times b. 2x times 5 gives us 10x. All right, and then plus b squared. b squared is plus 25. And that is equal to zero. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this real quick. You already have the answer there. It'll be on the video. You can pause it. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write the uh, quadratic formula. Boom. Fastest I've ever written in my life. All right. So x equals uh, the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over. 2a. All right, so that's a quadratic formula, and we're going to need that in a second. All right, so can this be factored any further? All right, we could try to do that factoring where we multiply a times c, but to save time, no, we cannot factor that using that method here. And when we can't factor it using the method, we consider it prime, right? Remember when we couldn't factor um, uh, a tr trinomial in the past or like this? This is, you know, this is prime at this point. We can't factor it anymore, right? There's nothing that we can do. So, um, but we can still factor this using the quadratic form that's trinomial, right? And you can see we have a, b, and c as options up there. So a is 4, right? b is 10, and c is 25. So if we plug that into the quadratic formula, technically we can still factor that, right? So here we go. Um, I'll do all the quadratic formula stuff on the right side. So we need to split this up. And again, remember why we use the quadratic formula. It's for prime trinomials, okay? Prime trinomials um, that, that can still be factored, but it, we need to use the quadratic formula that's going to give us um, a different answer, an irrational answer here, All right? So um, here we go. Let's do this. 2x minus 5 equals 0. All right. Add 5 to both sides. Add 5. We get 2x equals 5 divided by 2 divided by 2. And we end up getting x equals 5 over 2. Wow. Come on now. That's the best it's going to get right there. 5 over 2. All right. Um, so this one, we're going to have to do the quadratic formula. And I need space for that. And I cannot zoom in, so I'm going to end up going over here to do this, okay? So... X equals, well, let's first figure out A. A equals 4, and I'm looking right here at this. All right, A equals 4, B equals 10, and C equals 25. All right, so X equals the opposite of B, so negative 10, plus or minus. In fact, I'm going to do this in a different color. I apologize. That way we can see the difference here x equals negative 10, because the opposite of b, plus or minus, 
big square root here, so I have some space, all right? Plus or minus. B squared, B is 10, all right? So 10 squared, which is 100, right? I'm going to go ahead and do that. No, no, we'll do 10 squared. We'll simplify. I'll do it, do it the way that you guys should be doing here. Times 4 times A, which is 4, and times C, which is 25. All right, and that should be all over this whole thing. And then all over 2A, 2 times 4, 2. A is 4, all right? All right, so let's get going with this. Simplifying this, all right, we end up getting x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of. So when we all, when this is all said and done, all right, this is 100, right? And we have over here, when we do this, right, negative 4 times 4 um, is 16. But the way I would do it is 4 times 25, right? That gives us 100, and then 100 times uh, negative 4 would give us negative 400. So we have 100 minus um, 400 here, which would end up giving us a negative 300 inside of this, okay? That's yeah, fine. My color's kind of cool. All right, so that's a negative 300 when that's all said and done, all over 8. 2 times 4 is 8, and hopefully we didn't have trouble with that. All right, now, we got to simplify this, all right? This is a negative. Remember, that's an issue, okay? That means we need to use I here, all right? So what we end up with is, I'm going to do this right here so we have some space. X equals the opposite of 10 plus or minus. Now, when we take out the um, the negative, right, obviously there's going to be an I there. So simplifying the square root of 300, right, square root of 300, right, what factors, what perfect square goes into 300? Hopefully you were thinking 100, right, 10 times 10, 100 times 3. So if we did this, right, these are both going to be squared. We're square rooted, right? So what is the square root of 100? It's 10. So what this will end up being outside is 10i. Remember that i is there because it was a negative 310i. And we're left with the square root of 3 all over 8. All right. Now look at our coefficients. Do we have any um, great any common factors between 10, 10, and 8? Hopefully you see 2 as our common factor, so we need to divide each of those by 2 to get our final answer, which will end up being x equals, no, oh, come on now, negative 5 plus or minus 5i square root 3 all over 4. Again, all we did was divide each of the coefficients by the greatest common factor, all right? Um, so those are our answers, right? If we wrote those out in squigglies, all right, with the squiggly parentheses, x equals 5 over 2, squiggly parentheses, comma, negative 5 plus or minus 10i, 5i now, sorry, 5i, square root of 3, all over 4. We can't simplify any further. There's nothing that we can do to simplify that any further. So those are our final answers. All right? Looks like a goofy final answer, but that's, that's Algebra 2 for us. All right? Let's continue. Look at number 7. All right, looking at number 7. Do we have any GCF? Well, they're all even numbers, so we definitely do, and they all have x's. All right, so 2x is going to be our GCF. All right, so let's go ahead and write that out. Right, 2x parentheses, we're left with x squared minus 8x minus 20, right? When we divide it, we get x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. All right, now, before we just jump into quadratic formula for this right here, right, let's double check to make sure that it can't be uh, factored, right? Um, it can be. It can be factored, okay? So what numbers multiply together twice to get negative 20? It's going to be one negative number and one positive number. 
All right, so it would end up being, and the bigger factor will be negative because this is negative. So we got negative 10 times 2. All right, negative 10 times 2 times 2 is negative 20, negative 10, plus 2 is negative 8. So, thank God, this one can be, this one can be factored, right? So we get 2x, x minus 10, and then x plus 2. So you should always try to factor the trinomial, because you see we could here, and you see the benefit of that. Now all we have to do is set each of these equal to 0. No quadratic formula. I can all, I can do, I don't even need this side, right? Um, so no quadratic formula here. So you should always be checking that. If you can't, when in doubt, use quadratic formula, right? Um, the last one would, would not have been able to be factored, right? Um, the traditional way. We would have had to have used quadratic formula. So hopefully you're, you're starting to figure that out and understand that, right? So again, we're going to break this thing up, right? Boom. There's one factor there. There's one factor there, All right. This is going to be tough. 2x. Oh, I say it's going to be tough because I just don't have a lot of space here. Oh, man. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. We get x equals 0. All right. 0 divided by 2. Remember, you can't have 0 on the denominator. You can't have it on the numerator. Right? If I have $0 and I split it between everybody that's watched this video, you guys will have $0. Okay? Then we have x minus 10 equals 0. And, I, again, I apologize for cramming things. I'm doing the best I can with what we got. All right. Plus 10 plus 10, and we end up getting x equals 10. And then last but not least, x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2, minus 2. We get x equals negative 2. And I'll go ahead and pause and write the final answer. Boom. All right, so x equals negative 2, 0, and 10. And notice I did put them in this, you know, order of least to greatest. All right, um... It's not the end of the world if you don't do that, but it is the right way to do it. All right, so keep that in mind. All righty, let's go down here to good old number nine. All right, number nine here. Now, again, what I said is always check to see if you can factor it first so you can avoid having to use um, the quadratic formula. I'm going to try to do the A times C method here. All right, that we did in our special factoring notes. So again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you need to watch that video. All right, you need to work on those. We've had the re the review. We have the homework that has problems like this in it. Okay, so there is no GCF. All right, so the first thing we need to do is multiply a times c. Psh, definitely didn't do that the color I wanted to, but that's fine. All right, a times c. So we end up getting x to the fourth. Plus 35x squared minus 36 equals 0. All right. What two numbers multiply together to get negative 36 but add together to get positive 35? Hopefully you came to the conclusion that those factors, I'm actually going to do it this way so I have space below. All right. Those are positive 36. That's a 3. Right. Positive 36 times negative 1. That will give us negative 36. Add them. We get this number right here, 35. All right, so boom, we got it. All right, so we're going to now remember what this is. <laughs> we have x to the fourth here, right? This is x squared, right? Because this is x to the fourth, we need our first factors to be x squared because x squared times x squared will give us x to the fourth. Again, if you're if you need to watch the video on that, that's all part of the special factoring notes video. All right, um, need to have that knowledge before we're going into this. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write those out. X squared plus 36 close parentheses and x squared minus one. But we're not done yet, right? We're not done yet. I know this, it looks like we're, we're there. But remember, we need to bring A back in. Uh, a needs to come back into the picture. And it needs to be divided to the last term. All right. And 36 divided by 4, we can do that. All right. So 36 divided by 4 will end up giving us 9. So we're left on this side with x squared equals 9. Oh, sorry. x squared plus 9. My mistake. x squared plus 9 times, now this one cannot be simplified, right? This fraction can't be simplified. So that means that we need to put this denominator to the front and we end up getting 4x squared. It's gone now. It's back in the front there, minus 1. 
And if we FOIL that, we should be getting the same answer that we have, or the same uh, trinomial that we have up there, which we we would, all right? We absolutely would. Cool. Now we factored it, all right? So I'm going to use this side to finish it up, just so that we have space. X squared plus 9 times 4X squared minus 1 equals 0, okay? Can we factor these any further? No, we can't, right? If this was a minus sign, then we would be able to because it would be a difference of squares. Hopefully you see that, right? But we don't have anything. There's no such thing as a sum of squares, so we can't do that. And this one right here is all done. So now there's no more factoring that we can do. So let's go ahead and boom, split them up, right? Make them equal to 0. x squared plus 9 equals 0 minus subtract 9 from both sides. We end up getting x squared equals negative 9. All right, now we need to square root both sides, square root, oh, bummer. All right, we got a negative, that's being square root. Not a big deal, just take an eye out, all right, just take an eye out, remember that. All right, not like one of your eyes, I mean like take an imaginary number eye out, all right, that would be bad if you did the other one. All right, so x equals, what's the square root of 9? 3, what's the square root of negative 9? 3i, all right, 3i. Okay, so there we go, that's one of our answers. Oh, good call, plus or minus I heard someone saying, wait, shouldn't that be plus or minus? Yeah, it should. All right, plus or minus, 3i. Anytime you're taking the square root, make sure you remember plus or minus. All right, last but not least, we have 4x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, add 1. All right, we end up getting 4x equals 1. Divide both sides by 4. x equals 1 over 4. And... If I were writing them as squigglies, right, I could do that. I just don't have a lot of time right now, so I'm going to go right to the next one. We're going to factor this by grouping, all right? So let me go ahead and um, do that. Boom, all factored out. I used the grouping method, all right, which we uh, did together, all right? So um, group them using parentheses, all right? Take the GCF out. Notice that I underlined these here. They're the same, right? So we combine those as one right here, and then put these two together, x squared plus 20. All right, so now we can go ahead and finish this up. Boom, all right, 2x minus 5, that's a minus sign, equals 0. All right, we end up getting 2x equals positive 5. I didn't run out of space, but I added 5 to both sides. Divide both by 2, and we get x equals 5 over 2. All right, on this side, fantastic. And then this side right here, all right, we have x squared plus 20 equals 0, subtract 20 to both sides, minus 20, we end up with x squared equals negative 20, all right, what do we have to do, take the square root of both sides, take the square root of both sides, all right, but 20 is not a perfect square, all right, so um, remember we have the negative there, so the i is going to be out, all right, um, but Let's see, what's the square root of 20? If we were to simplify the square root of 20, what are the um, two factors that have a perfect square in them? It's 4 and 5. 4 is a perfect square. All right, times 5. So it would be square root of 4 times square root of 5. What's the square root of 4? It's 2. All right, so it would be 2 square root of 5. The only difference is because it's a negative, this would be 2 plus or minus 2i. Remember, again, it has to be plus or minus, right? So this would end up being x equals plus or minus 2i. I, that gets rid of the negative sign on the inside of the of the square root, and we end up getting plus or minus 2i square root of 5. So writing this out completely to finish this up is x equals 5 over 2, comma, plus or minus 2i square root of 5. And that is it. We only had to use the quadratic formula once, right? I believe for this entire thing. Um, but when do we use quadratic formula? When we cannot use. You have all the factoring methods now. Uh, you've been given pretty much all of the factoring methods that we'll be using. Um, the difference of squares, sum of cubes, difference of cubes. You have the special trinomial factoring um, when a is greater than one. You have normal trinomial factoring, right? Um, but if none of those work. Right? If none of those work, then you have to use the quadratic formula, right? Um, thank God for the quadratic formula, right, so that we can actually completely solve these. All right, so if you guys have questions, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Um, if you have questions about it, you can reach out to me via email, or you can post comments on Google Classroom so that your, your, your peers can see it as well. They might have the same questions, so I think that would be greatly appreciated. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Keep up the hard work, um, and I will talk to you soon. See you.